given the sort of data that we get for the beam experiment, we can determine the angles to the different positions, either by creating right triangles uh, with the x-axis as one of the legs and measuring rise and run and taking the arc tangent of rise over run. Uh, any point on the graph will do as long as we bring it down at a perpendicular to the x-axis. Any point in any of these rays brought down at a perpendicular to the x-axis will give us a rise and a run uh, or an opposite side and adjacent side. We can take the inverse tangent and get the angle just using the skills that we've developed in dealing with vectors. So that the kind of information we can obtain, again if we've timed everything accurately, is uh, what we see here. Okay, let's say that we see that one of these motion phases, for example from the time the beam, uh, the, 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 the washer hits the floor to the time the beam stops, goes from 50 to 170 degrees. In three seconds, uh, or let's say uh, that we go from 50 to 170 degrees in three seconds starting from rest with something accelerating the beam at a, what we expect to be a uniform rate. Then, uh, what can we determine from the fact that we go from 50 to 170 degrees in three seconds starting from rest? Well, we can figure the change in the angle over change in time. That's so many degrees over so many seconds, which will give us an average of so many degrees per second, okay, in this case 40 degrees per second. Now that is a measure of how fast the beam is rotating. It's a measure of the number of degrees per second through which it's rotating. Uh, faster rotation will have more degrees per second, slower rotation will have fewer. So this is a velocity, but it's not a conventional velocity. We don't use V for this because it's not distance per second, but it's angle per second. We therefore call this angular velocity, and we use the symbol omega, which is kind of like a W but with the corners rounded, so don't be calling this a W. Um, it's the omega. You've heard the uh, uh, biblical quote, uh, you know, the alpha and the omega. Well, this is uh, how you write omega. This is a small omega, a big omega. It uh, doesn't look all that much like the small omega, as is often the case with Greek letters and sometimes with uh, Arabic letters also. Um, in any case, this is what we use for angular velocity. When we're measuring the number of degrees or radians per second, we call that omega. So we see that now we have the situation where the average velocity, average angular velocity in this case, but it's still average velocity, is 40 degrees per second. The initial angular velocity is zero, if the angular velocity is increasing at a constant rate, that is, if the angular acceleration is constant, then we have the familiar situation where the final velocity is double the average, in which case we'd have 80 degrees per second. So that our uh, delta omega would be 80 degrees per second, from omega naught zero to omega f, 80 degrees per second, our change is 80 degrees per second, and our angular acceleration, which is an alpha. Remember I said alpha and omega, right? This is alpha bar, average angular acceleration, and of course if we have uniform acceleration, which we assumed up here, uh, this is just the acceleration, that's going to be change in velocity over time, but it's angular velocity. No difference in the way we think about it, but we symbolize it a little bit differently, and that's 80 degrees per second divided by 3 seconds, which is 26.7 degrees per second per second. Now I'll note that we usually do our angular calculations for angular velocities and so forth in radians. It might not seem at this point like that's more convenient, uh, but you'll see later why that is much more convenient. So 50 degrees is 5 pi over 18 radians. Uh, remember to take degrees to radians. 2 pi radians is the same as 360 degrees. So when we multiply by 2 pi over 360, uh, we're really multiplying by 1. So this is 2 pi radians over 360 degrees, and the degrees cancel the degrees here, and we end up with radians. We got 5 pi over 18 radians. 170 degrees is 17 pi over 18 radians um, by similar calculation. So we have initial theta is 5 pi over 18 radians, final theta 17 pi over 18 radians. Our delta theta is from 5 pi over 18 to 7 pi over 18, 12 pi over 18 radians, which is 2 pi over 3 radians. 
Now, we can divide that by the three seconds to get our number of radians per second average velocity. Since we start from rest, we can double that to get our final velocity, which gives us a change in velocity, which we can divide by the three seconds to get our angular acceleration. And if we just use these units consistently, everything will work out in radians per second for velocity and accelerations in radians per second squared.